Every bite you take is either fighting disease or feeding it. It's important to choose wisely. I love that. You're so clear today in your delivery. You know, we often reach for comfort foods, or I do, without realizing the impact they're going to have on my health. Making the wrong choices can lead to serious health issues down the line. It's time to act. So we want you to start making better food choices today. Your body is going to thank you for it. Your friends are going to thank you for it. And your family is going to thank you for it. So today we're going to explore healthy alternatives and help you transform your diet for a healthier you. I think it's important to know that choices you make today really determine your future. Eating healthy isn't always easy and fast because eating unhealthy is very easy and very fast. It's often convenient and pretty much what maybe everyone else is doing. And I did that for years. I I have eaten unhealthy for, I'm 66, I would say 60 in my first. No. Well, I'm, I mean, maybe not, but during my career, I, I ate mean, like crap. I met you, when I met you, you were eating pretty shitty. There you can, go. Can you say shitty? Well, you can. Okay. Um, but we've transformed, so that's probably, that's almost 20 years of transformation of your eating. It is, and, and I'll just say this. If you're serious about maintaining your health and your wellness as you age, it really is important to pay attention to this today. Embrace what it is we're talking about and make some changes. Now, if you're new here, I'm Mark, and this is my wife, Jody. And we don't focus on the financial aspects of retirement, but rather your health, your lifestyle, your relationships, and more. So please hit the subscribe button. And more importantly for us, if you could share this video or one of our videos with people that you really care about, who are on the same journey that we are, that would really help us a lot to get the word out and to get more subscribers to hear the message that we have to deliver. And I kind of want to go back to, I mean, if you think about it, over the past 20 years, we've really morphed your eating into a more healthy lifestyle eating, even most recently picking up the Mediterranean diet or the Mediterranean way of eating. It's true. We have. And I, I, I don't, I guess I have to give a lot of credit to you. When we met, we would go out to lunch, we would go out to dinner and in the beginning, you were kind of really, you know, kind and curious and getting to know me a little bit better. But as you got to know me better, you would say to me, what is it you're eating? Yeah. Why, why did you pick that? Why did you pick that? Right. Why did you pick the double cut prime rib with mashed potatoes with extra butter uh, and a baked potato to go with it, and which is a joke. But I, I did. I, I ate unhealthy. We ate, oh my God, I ate cold cuts. I ate fast food. I ate... Fried chicken. Fried chicken. Hot dogs. Hot dogs. I mean, I grew up on fried chicken, hot dogs, and Chinese food. Right. Walters and Mamaronick. General Lum Charles Yang, Chicken. Lum <laughs> Yang and Larchmont. And Kentucky Fried Chicken, wherever right. I happen to find one. Right. Yeah. And, and the other thing is just processed foods. You know, right. we are so concerned now about eating processed foods We've almost just completely eliminated that from our diet. We've tried really hard to get rid of packaged and processed foods, and it is hard. And we're not 100%, for sure. We could always do better. But, you know, if you look or you read in the paper or you look at any trends, young people today are being saddled with colorectal cancer, a lot of internal issues, stomach issues, IBS. A lot of it has to do with the environment and the processed foods that they're eating. Yeah, 100%. We had this... Um I can't remember who we had a nutritionist that we hired maybe five years ago or six seven years ago probably longer who told us when you go into the supermarket you should spend all of your time in the outside aisle the majority time the majority of time fruits and vegetables fresh protein nuts berries nuts well everything fresh right the aisles down the middle is where you run into trouble because it's processed it's canned and we're gonna get into all that today but right. when you're shopping you really want to spend the majority of your time in the outside circle of the supermarket. Right. Now, before we get into our um, discussions today and our tips, we have put a link below for our health and wellness checklist. So make sure you download that because that's going to give you a good jump start on how to make your life healthier. And another thing is do us a favor and stay to the end of this video today because we're going to give you five steps on how to begin eliminating unhealthy foods and bringing healthy foods 
into your life. So why don't we jump into All right, so we have the tw- first... We have 20 foods that we're going to talk about. 20 foods you should not eat. Eliminate from your diet. Today. And the first one is that idea of processed meats. Bacon, sausage, deli meats. You know, all of them are high in unhealthy fats, high in preservatives, and linked to significant health risks. You know, heart disease, cancer, they're finding direct links to a lot of these processed meats. Yeah, there's a huge correlation with processed meats and chronic health conditions. And that's something that you just need to understand and believe and act on. The one I remember, I had a trainer. Um, what was his name? Uh, he used to play for the Jets, if I remember correct, the New York Jets. Yes, the, yes, yes, the big guy. He said to me, "There's two things you should eliminate from your diet: S- any kind of sausage and prime rib, because there's so much fat in prime rib. And, and sausage the to- has has everything." In at it. the time he told you that, they were pretty much mainstays in your sure life. they were yeah, yeah who doesn't like sausage or so, prime rib so here's some alternatives to processed meats you can get you can eat meat and you know our our doctors tell us that they don't believe 100 percent cutting out meat but you can get lean meats so if you want to have meat instead of prime rib you can get a filet mignon yeah get or you can get leaner. skinless boneless chicken right leaner meats plant-based proteins all of those have a great um, protein and high levels of essential nutrients, which your processed meats just don't have. They're also lower in sodium and nitrates. Yeah. Right. So all of that is a win if you can do lean meats, fish, plant based uh, plant based options. Yeah. You know, you if you wanted to go on a plant based diet completely, you can get all in all the um, protein that you need. From plants. Right. From uh, beans. Well, I'm going to get into that later, but beans and everything else. So really want to stay away 100% from processed meats. We, it's very rare now that we will go out and get turkey on a roll. Like a deli sandwich. We just won't do it. Yeah. All right. So then another food group that's really bad, and it's certainly bad for me individually, but is any kind of sugary drink, Coke, Pepsi, ginger ale, any of those canned drinks, they're packed with sugar. Energy drinks, even flavored coffees. You know, sugar, it, we're going to do a separate video just on sugar, mm. but sugar is a main contributor to obesity and diabetes. I was pre diabetic not that long ago, and it came from sugary drinks, wine, and chocolate chip cookies, sugary drinks, and cookies, which we're going to cover in a minute. Yeah. So I really I had to make a change in my diet. And if your doctor is telling you you're pre diabetic, or you have high uh, blood sugar, you can change that. You can actually decide, you know what? I'm done. I'm going to worry about my health. I'm not going to worry about having my cookies. Well, I think one of the empowering things about this topic that we're talking about today is you can control it, right? You have the ways and the means to stop putting bad things into your body to fuel yourself. But these sugary substances, you know, they also lead to tooth decay, poor dental you know, um, weight gain, you know, insulin resistance. There's a lot of badness that comes with sugar. And there's a lot of badness that comes with sugar substitutes. And so you have to be really careful. It's not just don't drink regular Coke. Diet Coke's not that great for you either. Or Pepsi. I'm not trying to... Even Coke Zero. It's not we're right. against Coke, but it's got sugar in it. But there are some alternatives. Water, 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 and water is probably the number one alternative. And then there's certainly, you know, uh, flavored, you know, carbonated water or herbal teas. But there's a lot of choices that you can make that are different. And the other thing that I, <clears throat> excuse me, that I really want to say is that trying to go cold turkey on everything we're talking about today could be difficult. I will tell you that once a month, for whatever reason, when Joey and I are grabbing lunch, um, she'll say first, or I'll say, I'll have a diet soda. So we don't 100% eliminate it. Right. But once a month, we will have a sugar drink. Once, once a month, just, just kind of you kind of just urge for it. Just right? urge for yeah. it. Versus never, never, never having right. anything we're talking yeah. about today. And a lot of that depends on your personality. You know, I always say I'm a better black and white person. Like I just can't have it. Cut it out. I'm not good at little bits of things yeah. usually. So, the third food group we want to talk about is this idea around refined carbohydrates. You know, white bread, pastries, most breakfast cereals are just not good for you. They spike your blood sugar, they lack nutrients, 
And once your blood sugar spikes, you know, there's a spike and then there's a crash. You know, most of them are stripped of fiber and they lead to you overeating. I know I remember growing up, you know, cereal was kind of our go-to yeah. in our house. Cheer- you know? What kind of Cheerios? Cheerios, Honey Nut Cheerios, What was Chex the one with mix. the little uh, marshmallows in it? Lucky Charms. Lucky Charms. Yep. Yeah. I mean, yep. the chocolate, I don't know what they were, but... Count we, Chocula? Count Chocula. Remember that? Yeah. With what milk. Was the, what was the one that was... Cocoa Puffs. Cocoa Puffs. Yeah. Oh, Rice Krispies. Rice, Rice, Rice Krispies. Krispies. I would have Rice Krispies and... Two spoonfuls of sugar right. on top. Right. But, you know, all of that is just lacking fiber. It leads you to overeat. You really need to strive for more whole grains and vegetables. Yeah. So alternatives to these refined carbohydrates, like Jody said, whole grains, which is uh, rice. Brown rice is better than white. Quinoa. Quinoa. What is the other uh, grain that we eat a lot of? Um, we eat quinoa. Um I think we talk about it in a minute. Mm -hmm. Certainly vegetables. Our naturopath doctor tells us we need seven cups of vegetables a a day. That's a lot. It's a lot to get to. So stay away from white bread, pastries, and you know what? Cereals, you should just eliminate them as far as I'm concerned. Right. You can change them to, you know, a um, a cereal, a hot cereal, like you do an oatmeal. I do oatmeal. Yeah. I put some nuts on it. What did you have at Johnny's house? Fresh berries. Mucilis. Can't pronounce it. Mucilis? No. Yeah, muesli. I can't um, remember. Because he didn't have, uh, okay. we were at his son's house. Yeah. But I, I really now feel better and I enjoy eating a bowl of warm oatmeal with nuts on top and berries. I have that four days a week. Yeah, you do. You're All right. That. Trans fats, absolutely deadly for you. Margarine, fried foods, any kind of baked goods. Mm. Thing is, the trans fats, uh, they increase your bad cholesterol, and they're 100% linked to heart disease. You right. just have to stay away from it. And I didn't for years. You know, Kentucky Fried Chicken, uh, f- French fries. We still have French fries once in a while, but it's so rare. And we just, you know, we look at each other and go, no, not today. Right. Because, you know, and for me, my, my blood sugar was high, my cholesterol was high. And all that came from what I was eating and drinking. So Absolutely. you have to be careful. Yeah. And, you know, some healthier al- alternatives um, would be like olive oil, avocado oil, you know, nuts, you know, just Sesame looking oil. at. Um, and there are some oils that still carry some of that, you know, trans fat. But if you go to the natural oils or the oils that are based from something, you know, you wouldn't want to go to, what's the one everybody says is really bad for you? Just Western oil. Yeah, vegetable oil. Veg- yeah, West- yeah, vegetable oil. So, um, gosh, I remember <clears throat> my mom used to bake with Crisco. Crisco. Do you remember Crisco? 100%, yeah. She'd take a big white glob of that, put it in a cast iron pan, yep. and cook chicken cutlets. Oh, you would? No, I meant bake. Like, my mom would use it in, like, pie crust. Oh, we and- use it everywhere. Oh, wow. Use it on toast. Anyway. So yeah. Toast. yeah. Oh God. So anyway, staying away from trans fats is a huge improvement for you, and you really want to. Th- I don't think that's hard to quit. You just have to change what you cook with. Well, you have to change what's in your cabinets. I think. Well, we we'll get trans, into that at the end. Yeah. Trans fats are really not things that you say. Oh, I'm craving a trans fat. No, you don't right? notice when they're gone either. I mean, like you might say, I'm craving a sugary drink or a cookie or something. But a trans fat is really it comes from whatever you put in your cabinets. So write this one down. That's an easy change. Do a little more research on trans fats. Look at what you have in your cabinet right. and eliminate it because you're not going to notice it. All right, excessive salt. Now, salt, you know, you need a certain amount of salt. As a matter of fact, you're a little salt deficient. A little sodium deficient. Sodium deficient. And your doctor says she wants you to salt some of your food. Right. But when you get canned foods or processed snacks or fast food, they are loaded and loaded with excess salt that you don't need. It's just they have to do that so that it can sit on the shelf for four or five years. So think about that. Yeah. You know, so that leads to high blood pressure. And heart issues. Yeah, you know, I was going to say, I went so anti-salt because I have high blood pressure that runs in my family and heart issues that run in my family. But then I was also doing, you know, six days a week of 90 minutes of hot yoga. So I was also sweating out so much of my sodium and... I, I needed some sort of replacement for that, and I wasn't getting it. It was it was kind of interesting. I was iodine and sodium deficient. My mother and I used, when she was alive, we would make popcorn at night, and we would do probably a whole stick of butter and pour it on the popcorn and then salt, 
and then more butter and more salt. So more went, butter and more salt. You went both trans fat and salt. Oh, so you hit terrible. two categories in our list. Uh, listen, I can't take back what I did to my body, but I can certainly control going right, forward. What so you're doing. instead of salt, find some other herbs or spices that give the food a little bit of flavor. This is another one that. Well, you think it might really be hard. And listen, we have friends we go out to dinner and the first thing they do is salt the hell out of everything without even tasting it. Right. This is a, a little bit of a mental thing. Try no salt. And then if you really have a hard time, get some other herbs to put on there. And I think that, and if you have to use salt, just moderate. Just do very little of it just to get the taste. Right. All right, the sixth uh, food group is high fructose corn syrup. And you might say to yourself, well, I don't, I don't eat any of that. Well, unfortunately, you do. It's in any candy that you eat, any usually any sweetened yogurts, and a lot of times it's in salad dressings. Prepared salad dressings. Prepared dressing. salad dressings. Right. You know, it's common in processed food, and it's also linked to obesity. So weight gain and obesity is just something that, as you age, starts to kind of show up a little bit more, and this is one of those things you can eliminate. I wish I, before this video, had done the research again, but I forget the percentage of people in America who are obese, and I think we are the most obese country on the planet. I think we'd have to research that. But, but I think we are. But it's because so much of our food has so much of this, I'm going to call it crap in it, we're not really aware what we're doing. And it's a slow growth that we go through, particularly when we're retired and we're slowing down a little bit. It's get a little bit lazy. So you get, you get, you know, you eat out every single night. You're going to gain weight and you're going to really affect your body. Again, that category is not something that you crave, right? You're not craving <clears throat> high fructose corn syrup. No. One of the fixes that we did was we stopped buying salad dressings. And I started making salad dressings when we would have a salad. Super easy salad dressing recipes. You can Google them. You can look them up. But I used white vinegar. I used mustard, a little dash of honey, and um, a little bit of pepper, and maybe some garlic powder. And I would make these dressings, maybe a little bit of lemon, make these dressings. And we actually enjoyed the salads we do. more. We do. Absolutely. Yeah. You know... High fructose corn syrup is also associated with liver damage. And mm. one of the things you can do is use natural sweeteners as alternatives. And I think there's that. Honey. Well, honey for sure. Monk fruit. Monk mm. fruit is a natural sweetener. Monk fruit? Mm -hmm. What is monk fruit? Monk fruit is it's sweetener from a monk fruit oh, plant. What about those brown bags of um, sugar? Well, or a natural sugar. sugar. That's a natural sugar. Yeah. yeah. So. yeah. Okay. All right. Artificial sweeteners. Again, back to diet sodas. So they wanted to make sodas healthier, so they made diet sodas. And to keep the flavor, they put artificial sweeteners in there instead of sugar. And it just isn't good. The sugar-free desserts that you order um, in restaurants, they're loaded with artificial sweeteners. And this is stuff that's manufactured. And it's, it's a low-calorie product that you're eating, so it really doesn't do any good in your body. Right. I mean, it affects your metabolism, number one. So if you're gaining weight, it could be because your metabolism is down because you're eating artificial sweeteners. And it is linked to so many different health issues, too. You know, it's funny. When I, when I worked, our CFO <clears throat> would come in in the morning. He wasn't a coffee drinker, and he would have 12 diet sodas before 9 a.m. Wow. Before 9? Mm-hmm. 12. 12. Hmm. And he had a little refrigerator in his office, but he was always popping the diet sodas. And I was like, this cannot be no. good for you. With all of those, you know, uh, chemicals that you get in, you know, it's linked to digestive issues, as Mark said, weight gain. And there are alternatives, as we mentioned. There's stevia, there's monk fruit, there's honey, yeah. there's other things that you can sweeten with. But really, it's just eliminating those diet sodas and those uh, sugar-free desserts. From you know, so sometimes my... Um Oatmeal gets a little boring, so I'll put honey on it. Right. I go through this splurge, oh my gosh, I need a little more sugar, so I'll put honey on it. And it just makes it taste so much better. So alternatives really are a way to go. Now this next one, number eight, um, it really isn't a big thing for me. And, you know, I'd ask you to think about it for you, and it's deep fried foods. Oh, don't be ridiculous. That They're okay for you, deep fried foods. I was taught as a, as a very young child and what my mother's comment about fried food was, we just don't eat that. And that was it. And that's what I remember from the time I can remember talking about food, 
fried food and fast food, my mom would just say, oh, we just don't eat that. And I grew up on it. And you grew up eating it a lot. All the time. Onion rings, french fries, fried chicken, fried shrimp. I mean, you were the fried family. We were. And, you know, Crisco, Wesson oil, whatever it was. My mother would say, I'm not cooking in olive oil. The food's going to taste like olives. (laughs) I mean, I, I have come such a long way. But on the other hand, I also did so much damage to my body from my first 40 years. It, it's it's a shame. Yeah. My kids are a lot better. Your kids are a lot better. But and they, my kids are But they better. can be better. Our kids are a lot better. Oh, yeah, we tell our kids yeah. not to eat cold cuts. They still do a little bit because it's right. easy. And that's kind of a big change. And a lot of this is hard change to make. But we don't fry chicken. We bake chicken. Right. We just, the other night, I cooked the most amazing chicken cutlets, um, panko crust. In the oven. Yes. And it was tasted just they like were fried chicken. But it was really healthy. It was juicy. So there's so many recipes you can bring in to get the flavor. Or when you're jonesing for fried chicken, make healthy baked chicken in the oven. Even, what's the cereal people put on chicken? Oh, cornflakes. Cornflakes. Yeah. I'm not saying that's a good idea, but pan- yeah. panko's healthy for sure. Yeah. So um, baking, grilling sauteing really is so much better than any kind of fried food that there is. And don't forget, if you bake something, you bake a piece of chicken, you know, you can top it with things that are still fresh and still healthy. You know, a little bit of spinach, a little bit of olives, a little bit of um, chickpeas, a little bit of um, little, you know, cherry tomatoes. So the chicken will be warm and juicy coming out of the oven and top it with healthy things. You know what we're going to do? We're what? going to do a video on Mediter- our, our three favorite Mediterranean recipes. How about that? Sounds good. Now we want to remind you to stay to the end because we're going to share with you our five steps to begin this process of eliminating unhealthy foods. We're going to try to make it easy for you and give you a quick start and some steps to do. Now, this next topic is alcohol. Controversial. Sure. This is entirely up to you. You just need to be aware of the negative effects alcohol has on your body. That's all. I'm not telling you you shouldn't drink. I am telling you you should drink moderately if you're going to drink. I drink very rarely. I mean, I will. last year I had eight glasses of wine. This year I don't think I'm going to have any. It doesn't make me feel well. Right. But beer bloats you. Wine is full of sugar. You know, I, there's there, there are studies that say one drink a day is good for you. And I think that that gives people the permission they need to have three drinks a day because one sometimes isn't enough. Well, and you're talking a lot about the impacts on physical health. But I think we could all agree that alcohol, beer, wine, and hard alcohol also have an impact on your mental health. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's it's known to be a depressant. Everyone says tequila is not a per, you know depressant, but you know, it is. It does also have an impact on your mental. So every choice you make by taking your drink of beer or your extra glass of wine or whatever it might be, your vodka soda, whatever it is, you just need to know it has an input impact on your mental and your physical health. The physical liver damage. Yep, it's addicting. It will increase your chance of getting cancer. It's calorie dense, so you're going to gain weight, and it doesn't have any nutrients. It's not additive in any way to your life. Right. So, are there alternatives? Well, everything is being made now non-alcoholic. Just I saw an ad yesterday for uh, what are the things that kids drink? Not Trulia, but White Claw. White Claw with yeah. zero alcohol. Yeah. So it still has sugar in it, but there's no alcohol in it. Right. The key here: moderation. Right. Or yeah. elimination, it's up to you. But really understand how alcohol affects your body. And listen, if you have a problem, you should get help, for sure. Okay, the 10th item we kind of touched on earlier, but as a category in and of itself, it's just white bread. You know, sandwich bread, hamburger buns, baguettes, anything with refined grains lacks nutrients. It spikes your uh, blood sugar, and it's low in fiber. There's just nothing to it that is good. I'm laughing because when I was a kid, we grew up with Wonder Bread. Mm-hmm. I don't even know if it still exists. But it's the it's white bread. It's called Wonder Bread. And that's all we had in the house. And we'd have bologna sandwich on white bread. We'd have salami on white bread. We'd have white bread grilled cheese. But I remember my Italian friends would come over for dinner. And they would say, Mrs. Rollins, do you have any bread? Because they're used to having like the best Fresh bread bread, from the bakery down the street. 
And my mom would say, sure, I have some bread. And she would take out four or five slices of Wonder Bread and put it in a little bread basket with a napkin and say, here you go. And they'd look at it like, I mean, I can't imagine what the, when they went home and told their mom what the Rollins eat in the way of bread. But it doesn't bring any value There's to your no body value. at all. No value at all. Nothing. And, and what's important is there are great alternatives now. You know, there's whole grain bread. There's Ezekiel bread. There's gluten-free bread that tastes actually great these days. So you can eliminate not only the white bread, but also the gluten. You know, and I, th- I think if you find an alternative, while it may cost maybe a little bit more, I mean, for the amount of sandwiches or bread you actually have, this is a good, good yeah. place to substitute. Yeah. yeah. All right. This category, if you can eliminate this completely, you're really going to change how you feel. And that's canned soups. Again, I grew up on canned soups. What was the, what's the big soup? Campbell's. Campbell's. Campbell's everything. And you know. I did grow, I grew up on some soups as well. And they were always part of a recipe, right? Yeah. Like you could bake chicken in one of the cream of mushroom soups or, and it was a cheap, easy way to come up with a meal. Well, it was a cheap, easy way right. for my mom to give us lunch on a cold Saturday. Right. Here, I'm going to heat up some tomato dinty, soup, dinty more beef stew. Oh boy, remember that? Or what or was the other thing? The, Hormel the O's, spaghettios, spaghettios, yeah. Hormel mm, chili. No, that stuff we used to eat camping. We just open a damn can. Spam. Of, spam. Ugh. Oh my god. Yeah. So condensed soups, inst- instant noodle soups broth-based soups, they're high in sodium and full of preservatives. And it's going to create high blood pressure and it's giving you unhealthy fats. So what's the best alternative? Homemade soups. Right. You know, and even if you get homemade soup from a restaurant, they load it up with salt because they want it to taste good. You know, soup is a bit of a project to make, you know, cutting all the vegetables, you know, if you're making your own chicken stock or vegetable stock or whatever it is. But there are some quick shortcuts that you can do to make a homemade soup. Our daughter, Evan, probably makes a soup every Sunday and eats it, you know, a couple of days during the week. And she's gotten pretty good at it. Some chicken tortilla soups, some um, ravioli soups, you know. Who, who do you know that makes the best chicken noodle soup? Hmm. I'm trying to think of where we had good chicken noodle soup. Mark wants me to say him. You, what do you mean I you want do. you to say you him? Make, you and make, that's another video we're going to do. But start. you haven't made it in a long time. Yeah, a couple months. Mm-hmm. But it's winter time. Yeah, so it's time so to make it. We're in Florida, but it's winter time and it's cold. So I'm going to do a video on chicken noodle soup too. That'd be great. I actually think I have all the pictures for that. But anyway. All right. What's All right. Next? So the next one, number 12, would be margarine. Again, in and of a category of itself. Stick margarine, tub margarine, some baking fats. This also has the trans fats and the unhealthy oils in it. You know, I remember there was a study done. I don't know if you remember reading this years and years ago where someone left a tub of margarine in their car for like 10 years and they brought it out and it was still the same. Yeah. Yeah. So it melted, it re gelled, it melted, it re gelled, but when they tested it, it was still the same after 10 years. That just can't be good for your body. That's disgusting. So some of the alternatives would be, you know, butter, just utilizing butter. Now that's a fat, but, you know, my, my grandma, natural. my grandmother used to say, there's nothing like a little butter that doesn't keep your joints moving. So butter and then plant based spreads, which we have in the fridge we because we have plant based children. children. Yeah. Plant-based children. Yeah, dairy. We have dairy-free children. They're not plant humans. <laughs> they're they're humans. But and it's not bad. Yeah. If you cook like if you're gonna fry an egg and you put plant-based butter in there, yeah. you don't notice a yeah. difference. Yeah, and it's available now. And it's healthier for you. That's the thing. A lot of the stuff we're talking about today, you are not gonna notice a difference in the taste of the food, but you will notice a difference in how you feel. Right. So, right. Good point. All right. Uh, fast food. Grew up on fast food. McDonald's was our go-to. Kentucky Fried Chicken. Um, Chinese food. Taco Bell? Never did Taco Bell. Okay. Never did the other hamburger joints. Arby's, Wendy's. Well, I did I did, uh, I did. did like going to, what's the place? That, Hardee's had the roast beef sandwich. Oh, Hardee's. That was good. I thought that was Arby's. Uh, Arby's? I don't know. But I, I wasn't a listen, fast food girl, so you, you I, I got not. nothing. You didn't even, I have nothing to add to this category. No, but it's high in calories, <laughs> fats, and sodium. Yep. It brings obesity on, heart disease risk. It's poor nutritional quality. I don't care what the fast food places say. Right. It's not good for you. I, and listen, I'm not a scientist, 
and I'm not backing this with any science, but I've done enough reading to know it's not good for you. What's better is home cooked meals. Now those chicken cutlets that I cooked um, last week, I cooked enough that we froze a ton of them, well, a ton of them, 12 of them, and we pull those out for a dinner or we pull them out for a lunch and reheat And they're them. okay reheated, I'll tell you. They're not as good as they were the first night. They were, they're not, but they're so much better than going to yeah. the deli no, and buying, I get it. you know, and I they're fine. It. And you can doctor it up a yeah, little bit, but. That's true. Anyway, and the food's addictive. The fast food chain, the French fries in McDonald's are sugar or salt? Salt I, and sugar. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if but that's an urban legend that they well, roll the French fries in sugar. But they're addicting. But Have you ever had them? I have had them. And they're addicting. They're very good. Yeah, they're very good. <laughs> they're, so, I mean, they're very bad for you, but they taste... Fast amazing. food yeah. is bad yeah. for you. Yeah. That That's another big change, maybe a harder change, but you have to put some effort and time into replacing fast food restaurants with better quality food. Okay, the next one, number 14, would be your energy drinks, right? Any commercialized energy drinks, high caffeine, pre-work supplements, all of those energy drinks, which honestly, we've had to talk to our children about, you know, we've had, we had one that was a Red Bull guy every morning, remember? Mm -hmm. And the other that was a Celsius, which I think is a high caffeine drink, um, every morning. And, and really we had to break down the content that was in there, looking at the caffeine levels and looking at the sugar levels. You know, they're, um, they're linked to heart palpitations, anxiety, sleep disturbances, and they just aren't a natural energy source. It's, it's fake energy that you're bringing into your body. And it doesn't help with hydration. No. It actually, in some instances, some of these drinks dehydrate you. So if you're not drinking a, enough water on its own, if you're drinking energy drinks too, you need to drink even more water, right. which is hard. And as we age, we have to we have to hydrate more and more and more. Right. So this would be something really bad to pull into your diet or something really good to get rid of as you age. And energy drinks are used as a fix if you're not sleeping well or you're tired and lackadaisical and you need to work hard. Right. That's not a good way to fix the core problem, which is you're not getting good sleep. Right. And you might not be getting good sleep because you're drinking too much and eating lousy food. So you really need to go to the problem. But energy drinks that have come out on the market really don't bring any good value to your body. Right. Right. All right. So I have no problem with this category because I don't I have a eat little it. more of a problem yeah. with this one. Flavored yogurt. Yeah. So I think plain yogurt, like Greek yogurt, natural right. flavors is okay. But when you start eating fruit flavored yogurts or dessert yogurts or kids yogurts, again... It's high in sugar and high in artificial flavors. Yeah, this one's hard for me <clears throat> because, well, first of all, you spend a little more. You can get the organic, you know, let's say a honey flavored yogurt, yogurt, which, you know, the honey should be a natural honey, not honey flavored. Um, but, but I have a hard time with this because slide things in. They, they probably do. This is one that I need to kind of go through our refrigerator and, and really take a look at to see because I like yogurt. I don't. Yeah. I, matter of fact, I've never really tried it. Yeah. And I should because regular natural Greek yogurt, I think they say it's good for you, yeah. right? Yeah. It could be good for you. But right. this other kind, it affects your gut health. Um, it affects your, your weight gain. A lot of what we're talking about affects your weight gain. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why we have such an obesity problem in um, the United States. Yeah, could be. And don't forget, stay to the end. We're almost there. We want you to get our five steps how you can begin eliminating unhealthy foods and bring healthier foods into your life. Okay, so number 16 seems pretty obvious. Ice cream and frozen desserts. Commercial ice cream, commercial frozen yogurts, any commercial sorbets are all high in sugar, fats, and often have a ton of artificial ingredients. Yeah, they're, they're calorie dense, they have no nutritional value or little nutritional value. And again, this is gonna lead to weight gain and right. cravings. You know, if having ice cream every single night is not a good idea. Mm. Having it once a month when you're out to dinner at a restaurant and say, you know what, I feel like a little ice cream, that's okay. Right. But, but knowing that you can control that is important. The best way to eliminate ice cream from your diet is don't buy it. Mm. Yeah, again, just, that's that checking through your freezer. And do you really we, we need... We talk about that at the end, but yeah. if you don't have it in your freezer... You're not going to have it. Right. And then if you're out to dinner, you treat yourself. Or you go to the ice cream store. If you need, once a month, you want an ice cream. Because we don't think you should have to completely eliminate all of this, all of the time, 
from but maybe, your life. But maybe it's remove hard. it from your fingertips. Remove it from your You know, maybe that's the real message is remove it from your finger. Make yourself have to work. Like, let's get in the car and go get an ice cream. Yeah, because you know? the ice creams, you know, they, many times they contain um, additives and preservatives that right. just hurt your blood sugar levels and your overall health. So right. you have to be careful with that. Okay. You touched on salad dressings before, but all the commercial salad dressings, dr- dressings that you buy in the store, the bottled ones, the creamy ones, even low fat, they're really unhealthy. They have unhealthy fats, they have sugars, and they have additives. You really need to find a way to stay away from them. Even, even like the oil and vinegar ones, they've got stuff in there to make it taste great. Your point of us doing dressings at home is wonderful. And yeah. Every time you do that and you have the little shaker, they're delicious. They are. And, and it's easy to do. I mean, it really doesn't take long. It's not a lot of work. It's not a lot of ingredients. And you make enough for that night and maybe one other time, wa- you know, wash your stuff and do it again next time you have a salad. But I think it really does make a difference. I know for me, I could eat all the salad <clears throat> in the world as long as I have a great dressing the worst thing for me is get a salad that, and we've done that down here in Marco at a few restaurants, and the whole bottom is oh. just a soupy pile of dressing. So one of the other ways that you can kind of help get yourself out of this is when you order a salad, and I always order a little uh, dressing on the side, right. and then I dip, like I don't pour that on my salad to try to get the least amount of salad dressing I can with the proper amount of vegetables. Or just ask the waitress, I would like some olive oil. And vinegar. And lemon, maybe. And lemon. Yeah. And just put that on yourself. But right. if you're having a healthy salad with lots lots of other vegetables in there, that's good for you. Hey, listen. But if you put unhealthy dressing on top of it, it almost overshadows the whole be- health benefit well, of the salad. I remember when they first put the calories on the menus. Oh, yeah. And you'd say, well, I always come here and I always get the strawberry, let's say it was a strawberry spinach salad. And then you notice that it's strawberries and it's spinach and it's bacon and it's crumbled blue cheese and it has croutons. And when they added up the calories, I was better off having the burger. I know. Right? All right. So number 18, processed cheese. That's cheese slices, cheese spreads, and snack cheeses. And I remember when I was little, our big thing was Velveeta cheese, which is not even cheese. I think it's called a processed cheese food. So I don't even know what that means, but I know that we always had Velveeta in our refrigerator. That was one of the bad things that we always ate. How about Cheese Whiz on Ritz Crackers? Whiz. Oh, did you used to? You no, were a Cheese Whiz I, guy? I never ate cheese. I yeah. still don't eat cheese. You're not a cheese guy. But Cheese Whiz, the can, and you like turn it like that. Oh, and yeah. And you put it I on a Ritz Cracker. That. You used Is that to like cheese that, right? Whiz? That's Cheese Whiz, I thought I think. Cheese Whiz was in a jar. No, it's a little squirter oh. thing. Okay. Cheese, though, these, these <clears throat> processed cheeses are high in sodium and preservatives and very low in nutritional value. You know, they can contribute to high blood pressure and they lack any beneficial nutrients found in natural cheese. So what's the alternative? Natural cheese, plant-based cheese. You know, anything that is natural is better for you. I hope you're starting to see a common thread here. All of the foods we've talked about so far, high in sodium, preservatives, no nutritional value, sugar, and sugar, and they all lead to high blood sugar, heart disease, obesity, and high more. High blood pressure, high cholesterol. Blood pressure. So why would we want to eat these? And if you're eating all of these, you've really got to figure out a way to eliminate some of them, one a month, whatever it takes, mm. because none of the foods we just talked about are good for you, period, full on stop. Including this next category that has taken me so much energy and so much determination to wean myself off of, but it's store-bought cookies and pastries. Not so much pastries, but cookies. Chocolate chip cookies, I can't even think of the name of them. I'll eat any kind of chocolate chip cookie. Oreo cookies, probably the worst thing for you. Not Probably not Package one natural cakes. ingredient in an donuts. Oreo cookie. Donuts. I mean, how many times did I go to Dunkin' Donuts and get a glazed donut? Oh, my God, it was so good. Or the bow tie. For <laughs> years I did that. Do you ever have a bow tie? No. Oh, so good. But yeah. you know what? They're not good for you. Yeah. High in sugar, unhealthy fats, and additives, weight gain, sugar addition, addiction. Um, they're often made with refined flours. Right. I mean, there's nothing good about... Any of those cookies. So, you know, an alternative would be some type of homemade baked 
good that maybe contains like rolled oats, maybe some natural chocolate bits if you need that in, honey for sweetener, you know, something that's a little more natural, maybe a little scoop of peanut butter to add some actual protein to that. You know, so there are ways that you can still get your sugar kind of cookie fix, but it takes time and it takes effort. We found the greatest new coffee shop on Marco Island and it's called Ori's Bakery, O-R-I apostrophe S. Bakery and coffee shop? I think so. Bakery Bakery and cafe? Yeah. So uh, it's a husband and wife from Chicago came down. She's always been a baker. They opened this um, breakfast place, but everything is homemade. Mm. It's stale in three days. It's lovely. She prides herself on that. It's actually, if you need a baked good fix or a croissant or something like that, they make them with healthy ingredients. And she does gluten-free, she does fat-free, she does dairy-free. So finding a place like that to get your baked uh, goods fix really is a good way to go because this the store-bought ones trans fats artificial preservatives everything bad we talked about shows up in these cookies all right number 20 is probably something that i lived on and maybe you lived on during your college years or earlier years and it's instant noodles or ramen yeah right Package instant noodle soups, cup of noodles, you know, the ramen noodles. I mean, think about it. I think you could get, th- when I was in college, I think you could get three ramen boxes for like a dollar. The little the little kind of crinkly package, it was shaped about uh, this big by that thick. And you put a cup of water yep. in the pan, boil it, drop this cube brick. in, brick in, <laughs> stir it a little bit. It kind of falls apart. And that was your nutrition for yeah. the night while you were right. studying. while you were studying. Oh my gosh. It is so bad for you. The sodium that's in there, the unhealthy fats, no nutrients at all. Right. And it also often contains MSG and some other additives. So your alternative would be, if you need a noodle fix, you know, a homemade noodle dish with fresh ingredients, right? In, In the packaged ramens, there's no nutritional benefit at all or any fiber. You can actually find noodles now that actually have fiber in them. So we gave you a list of 20. Right. We hope that you wrote some of these down. If not, watch this again. But here's five steps that you can do to begin eliminating some of these unhealthy foods. And we want you to, you know, go slow and think about this. Uh, The first step, really, like Jody said, is take inventory. Write down these 20 things that we gave you. Do you have all of this in your house? Mm. Educate yourself on these products. Understand how harmful they are. And start getting rid of them. I mean, we we do not buy store-bought cookies anymore, period, full stop. We just don't. Right. Except once in a while when I have a craving. Well, if you're having, a, ba- a, if you're having a bad day, I'll try to find you one or two. But really take inventory of what you have and begin to eliminate it. It's, it's, it's a big deal. It's a big change. But it's really important. If you want to do what we're doing, which is to become healthier and live longer and live longer healthier then you really need to do this. The second big category would be to plan your meals with healthy alternatives. You know, research healthy recipes. I mean, there are healthy recipes at your fingertips on your phone while you're in the store where you can click a button and it goes right to a shopping list. I mean, there's an app called Paprika, for example. If you get the app called Paprika, you can search for recipes in any category and hit a button and it goes right into a shopping list for you. And you can see all the nutritional values. So plan, create a meal plan that works for you, plan your meals for the week, and incorporate these types of recipes. And you know what? If you're not a good cook, go on YouTube and take some cooking lessons. Learn from some experts that can teach you how to do quick and easy, healthy recipes. Right. And make it some, you know, make it fun. Absolutely. All right. So now you've eliminated everything, or you've eliminated some things, you've... uh, started to eat healthy you have started to plan some recipes now you want to start replacing some of the things that you got rid of with some of the healthy things so start small replace one or two items per week right i mean get rid of unhealthy trans fats and oils and bring new oils in get rid of your white bread right and bring in whole grain bread Get rid of your diet sodas and sodas and bring in water and herbal teas. Right. And what I would say is give yourself time to adjust to the taste of the healthier foods that may help your your palate adapt, right? I think that's a good point because if you all... Because you can't do it right away. Like, it's not going to happen right away. You go salt-free. And listen, I told you about my popcorn with the salt. Yeah. The amount of salt I put on everything. At first, you're like, this food is missing something. 
But then when you eliminate it and you go a month without salt, you start to taste the food and you don't miss it. Right. So I think that's a good idea yeah. just to give yourself some time to adjust. Don't give up after two days. And then the fourth bucket would be <clears throat> educate yourself on nutrition. You know, read books, read articles, focus on reliable sources for nutritional information. You know, watch educational videos and find vi videos from credible health experts that you trust and then move forward from there. And the other thing to do is consider hiring a nutritionist or find a nutritionist online. Again, there's so much on YouTube for free, just like this channel, that can help you find easy, fresh, fun ways to eat healthier. So the last step, number five, is track your progress and adjust it as needed. You know, maybe keep a food diary. Spend this next week writing down everything you eat and how it makes you feel. Don't even make any changes, just right. try it. Then start making these changes and see how you feel after eating a meal without salt or a meal that's not cooked with trans fat and you cook it with olive oil instead. See if you really feel different or taste any different. Because a lot of these foods that we're asking you to eliminate and replace, you won't notice the change, but your body will really love you for it. You know, and finally, you know, don't <clears throat> forget to celebrate. You know, celebrate your victories. Recognize and celebrate the progress that you've made and keep yourself motivated. Implementing these steps gradually will help you make the transition to healthier eating habits and a more manageable and sustainable plan. Now, the changes that we're suggesting is probably one of the hardest things that I struggle with every day and you might struggle with as well. So it's a process. You need some patience. You need willpower. But you also need a vision of why are you doing this? You know, why do you want to live longer and why do you want to be healthier? That's really important to think about. And it's important to start slow, you know, go through the five steps we just gave you and begin to embrace this phase of life with a new attitude. Now this next video, why is everyone so tired in retirement? You know, after learning about the foods to avoid, learn more about energy levels and fatigue in retirement. Watch this one next. You're going to love it.